Hey, hey, thank you so much for watching, for listening. Totally stoked that you're here. Of course, I want you to subscribe. Why wouldn't you? Hello, we have great content and really cool guest interviews. So I have my new friend, Barry Bennett. <laughs> thank you for hanging out. Thanks for having me. Totally appreciate it. So Barry, and we were joking like off camera. I'm like, you're like, what are we going to do? I'm like, well, I'm going to get to know you because I really don't know. <laughs> I mean, okay. I know about you, right? But give me some, kind of some of your background. Where did you grow up? And Well, my father was in the Air Force. So I grew up all over the country and mm -hmm. in Europe a little bit. Uh, but I uh, went to Texas A&M back in 1970, and I got born again in 1972. Hmm. And I uh, went to Bible college from 76 to 78, Christ for the Nations. Yep. And then uh, became a missionary. My wife and I have been missionaries in uh, Mexico, Guatemala, and Chile for over 12 years. Yeah. Uh, and then came back and started a Spanish Bible college in Dallas in 2001, 2002. Did that for five years. And I've been with uh, Andrew Womack Ministries and Karis Bible College now for the past 15 years. Mm -hmm. So That's I am, cool. Yeah. Kind of all over the place. Quite a bit. Yeah. And I do remember you did ministry to Cambodians in Dallas. You're right. Yeah, so how back did those in, two things go together? Back in the 80s, before we were foreign missionaries, we were working uh, with Cambodian refugees in Dallas that had been brought over from Thailand from the refugee camps. Wow. We did that for two and a half years. Ooh. Yeah. Did you learn some Khmer? My wife did. She was more dedicated to that than mm -hmm. uh, than I was. But Chim Lip Shu, Sok Subai, Akun Chan. A few of those phrases, yeah. Mm -hmm. That's cool. What did you think of that? Did you enjoy that? It, was, was, that uh, it was a very uh, powerful experience in our lives, especially the man we were working with. So Paul Ung was a very uh, powerful man of God, saw a lot of miracles, a lot of healings. And so we learned a lot from him. He was the pastor of the work we helped facilitate. And uh, it was just a, a life transforming uh, experience for us. Mm -hmm. And did you hear stories like, because the Khmer people that came over, and we heard a lot of terrible stories because all of them had lost somebody in the purge and in the, in the genocide that took place. So, yeah, we were familiar with all of that. Hmm. Yeah, that's I remember seeing that. I was like, huh, I like Cambodia. Yeah. I've been a few times. So OK, I have not. But we he's back over there now. So we do have that connection. That's yeah. cool. That's cool. So why did you jump into working with Andrew? Uh, I was teaching in, as I mentioned, a Bible school, a Bible college in, in Dallas, Spanish Bible College, and began to listen to Andrew on the radio when I would go to lunch every day. And he just happened to come on at the time I was driving. And I thought, you know, I like this. And uh, it's a lot of what I teach. And then, you know, he obviously had some more revelation and I just grew to like it. And as the, the season sort of ended for the Bible college at the church that we were where we had it, and uh, I began to feel from the Lord to go up and check out uh, Karis. So my wife and I flew up and checked out the school and the ministry. And the Lord spoke to me there, actually, that I would teach there one day. And I, that was very shocking to me. Hmm. Uh, but uh, shortly thereafter, we moved up <coughs> excuse me, to uh, Colorado Springs and have been there ever since. And I worked in the phone center for a couple of years, uh, praying for people over the phone. And then one day, an opportunity came to, to teach chapel. And from there, it went from one thing to another. I now teach 16 courses in all three of our different years. Wow. So 16. That's a lot. It is <clears throat> awesome. I love it. Mm -hmm. yeah. What's your favorite thing to teach? Healing. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Why? Well, I loved the subject before, but then I, I got uh, diagnosed with stage four cancer here a couple of years ago and was two days away from death and uh, had quite a journey, but uh, I have a, a new passion for healing since that time. And so I really enjoy helping people with uh, their questions on healing. Mm -hmm. That's totally cool. Yeah. You have kids, you're married, right? I have, I have three children and eight grandchildren. Nice. And so, yeah, we've been married 44 and a half years. Mm -hmm. And um, my second son, Daniel, works at the ministry with me. He's also a teacher and an administrator at the school. Mm -hmm. So we That's are cool. blessed. So for your three kids, they all live in the same, in the vicinity? Uh, my oldest son lives in Dallas mm -hmm. and my other two live in the Springs. Nice. Yeah. So most of the great, of the grandkids are around? Uh, of the eight, six of them are close by, two are in Dallas. Yes. Yeah. That's cool. Yeah. Very cool. What do you like to do to relax? What do I do to relax? My goodness. Uh, spend time with my wife, 
we like to go out and eat. We like to go shopping. We like to play mini golf. We like, I mean, at this season of my life, I'm, I don't have kids around constantly. So it's more about me and her. Yeah. So. Yeah. Do you like to read? I do much. Yes. Mm -hmm. What do you like bit. to read? Well, I, most of my reading now is uh, based on what I'm going to be teaching or things God is giving me to teach. And so yeah. I study along those lines, mm -hmm. but mostly in the Bible. Yep. Do you have any like, do you read any fiction, anything like that? If I get off into other things, I would go to World War II history. My father was in World War II, got shot down over in France. So I, that's very interesting to me. Yeah. Uh, so along those lines. Mm -hmm. yeah. Did you see Monuments Men? The movie called Monument yeah, Men? Yeah, I did. That's been a few years back. Yeah, because yeah. that was kind of a fun Hollywood history kind of thing. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Finding the, the treasures that had been mm -hmm. uh, stolen. Yeah. Yep. Do you like to do like any kind of, you did mini golf? Do you do any hiking or any of that? Because we Colorado, have. That's all good. Yeah, for... down there it's all about hiking, living outdoors. So we've done a lot of that. Mm -hmm. and of course, we have Garden of the Gods nearby and Pikes Peak. And yeah. Been up there a couple of times. And so, yeah, we get out and do things along those lines. Nice. Yeah. Well, that's cool. And favorite parts of the Bible that you like? Well, uh, anything that that uh, gives me life, anything that is a promise that I see the nature of God, the heart of God, uh, God's will for my, not just my life, but everyone's life of just the blessings of God, uh, all of those kinds of things. I, As I say, I've gone through seasons, but this is the season I'm in right now of... Uh, understanding and enjoying abundant life. Hmm. So That's cool. Yeah. And are there parts of the Bible that are difficult for you? You're like, eh. Not uh, trivia, Old Testament history. <laughs> My wife is big on Old Testament history. Yeah. I'm not quite as adept at that area, but uh, those, hmm. are, those are the more difficult areas for me, I guess. Yeah. Yeah. How about Ezekiel? Is that do you really uh, enjoy Ezekiel? <laughs> <laughs> I can't say that I really do. <laughs> no, he, that wasn't doesn't yeah. ring my bell too much either. Yeah. Nice, nice, so. nice. So, do you ever hear of pickleball? I've heard of it. Uh, it's a paddle ball type game, right? Yeah. Okay, I have not played it or seen it much, but I've heard of it. So, this is my question, reason for asking this. How tall are you? Six foot four. Yeah. So, and you have good wingspan too. I guess so. Yeah. yeah. So, like, if you played paddle ball, you could dominate. Okay. Not pa pickleball. If you pickleball. played pickleball, yeah. yeah, you could dominate because of your wingspan and your height. Okay. Nobody's going to lob over you. All right. Well, and uh, you could, like, cover the middle really well. Maybe I'll give it a shot. <laughs> so, I guess you play, apparently. I, yeah, I played some. Does your wife do any sports, any kind of hobbies like that? Uh, we used to. <laughs> she, she does still swim. She uh, is a member of a gym where she goes and swims several times a week. And yep. That kind of thing. She's really big into flower gardening, so we have a big flower garden oh, in, our, nice. in our backyard. So. Nice. And is, does she cook a lot? Uh, in the winter, more. She bakes more. That's her hobby in the winter. Uh, in the summer, it's flowers. Oh, nice. So, yeah. Do you cook? Uh, breakfast. Breakfast. I can I can fry some eggs and make some coffee and yeah get to work on time. So. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> that's good. Yeah. So does she make like soups and stuff in the winter? She could. Yes, she has. Mm -hmm. And uh, I've gotten her baking me pies and that kind of thing. So I like that. So. Mm -hmm. What's your favorite thing that she makes? Well, apple pie is one of my favorite. Chocolate pie, any kind of pie, I just about mm -hmm. I like. So. You prefer fruit pies over like, um, like the uh, what is it, meringues or pecans or anything? Uh, I don't like <laughs> pecan. That's probably one I don't like. But everything else, any fruit pie, I like. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Boysenberry, blackberry, cherry, sure, sure, blueberry. Sure. Ooh. Yeah. I make a blueberry goat cheese basil pie. All right. I know. It sounds weird. Blueberry, yeah. goat cheese, and basil. Who would put all those together? I don't know, but it's really good though. It sounds good. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yep. Favorite thing to eat? Oh, favorite thing to eat. I I like Mexican food or Tex Mex. Yeah. And uh I like steak. I like most of the normal things that yep. people like. <laughs> and when you say Tex Mex, what it what's kind of your go to? Uh we love to go to on the border. Mm -hmm. And then I, people hate it when I say this, but I like Taco Bell uh, for a quickie. So. <laughs> That's great. Yeah. So what do you get at Taco Bell? What's your standard order? I, I'll get bean burritos, uh, chips and cheese. Sometimes I'll go to the, the Mexican pizza is back. So I go with that. <laughs> Anything burrito-ish I like. Yeah. Know? That's fun. So. Are you a big spice? You like spicy food? Uh, somewhat. Not big, but yeah. somewhat. Yeah. Yeah. 
Well, that's cool. Yeah. So what's the, what is a question? What's the, the question, first question you're going to ask God when you get to heaven? Oh, man, that's a good question. What's the first question I'm going to ask God? Well, on the on a humorous note, Jesus only ministered three and a half years. Yeah. And some of us, some of us have been doing this for decades. It doesn't seem fair uh, <laughs> that he checked out so quickly. Yeah. Because <laughs> when you're in the ministry a long time, uh, you you see people, you see suffering, you see all kinds of issues that are, you know mm-hmm. always there, and it it can get very wearing. You know, I was a missionary for twelve years, pastor for eight of those years. And those kinds of things can tire you out. So you, it's important to stay refreshed, mm. uh, to stay alive in, in the things of God. But uh, yeah, Jesus, you know, obviously he went to the cross for us. I, I get it. But three and a half years is very brief time to minister. Mm-hmm. And uh, some of us have been doing this for quite a while. So yeah. So you'd say like, why are we here? So why are we here so long? And you got out so yeah, quick. in a in a humorous way, I would say that that's not a serious question. But yeah. <laughs> I think it's a good question. I mean, I would be interested in hearing the answer to that. Yeah. Yeah. Nice. Nice. Well, thank you for hanging out. Thank you yeah, for watching. You bet. And thank you for subscribing as well. Make sure you hit the notification bell right there. Um, and here's a question for you. What would be the first question you would ask God when you get to heaven? I think that's an interesting question uh, for you to think about and consider. And of course we have a fantastic joke for you. <laughs> I, I practice ahead of time, so I, I think I'll pull it off. Okay. What should you do if you are addicted to seaweed? You should see kelp. Get it? See kelp? Kelp. Right. <laughs> <laughs> so stupid, but of course, the next time it'll be so much better. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs>